Hey kids, um, quick little bonus video here. This is from module five, lesson six in the problem set. Um, my video that I made previously uh, gets you all the way through here and then I didn't get a chance to really properly solve this with you. So this is just gonna be a one problem video for this very challenging problem, which we actually ran out of time in class today and we weren't able to finish it just because there's so much in this um, this lesson. So uh, it is quite challenging. It takes a little extra thinking. So I wanted to take my time and let's jump into it. So it says two rectangular prisms have a combined volume of 432 cubic feet. So when you add both of them up, you get 432. But prism A has half the volume of prism B. Now a nice way of thinking about this is that B is twice what A is. And so it's handy to use a tape diagram and to say, well, if this is A, then B would be twice that, okay? And so this is A versus B. Now what you might notice if you set it up like this, and you can also, you know, if I'm adding across uh, with numbers, I'm gonna have a sum of the 432. But it's these three pieces that equally make up the 432. And if you get where I'm leading you, and you say, oh, oh, look, I could split 432 into three pieces, you would be right. So using this word half to double the size of B or to show that A is half of B, you can take these three pieces and divide the 432 cubic feet uh, into equal parts so that we will have a number we can put in here instead of A and know how to label our prisms. So start dividing four by three. This is just standard algorithm, one step at a time. You get one three in there, that's your divide. Now multiply, then subtract, one left over, quick compare, bring down because one is less than three. Divide 13 by three, four times three is 12. Subtract, get one, quick compare, bring down. We just need one to be less than three or whatever's left over. Divide again, 12 divided by three, four, four times three is 12, and we end up with a zero. So that each part is 144, okay, for the volume feet cubed for prism A, and then each part is 144. So if I have 144 twice, the total volume of prism B would be 288, okay, because you are uh, doubling that. Okay, now don't forget to um, label it feet cubed and feet cubed, 144 feet cubed, if you want to write that here and here. All right, so now we have part A that's finished, but it gets a little bit more complicated. If prism A has a base area of 24 feet, what is the height of prism A? So we don't have to worry about the length and the width. They, they don't need to know that. Remember that the formula, length times width times height, requires these three things, unless they have already given you the base area. Remember what I said about the base area means they already did the work for you for two of the numbers. And what they're asking is what the height is. But we do know the volume. Okay, so for prism A, the volume is 144. And so what we have to do here is to solve by saying 24 times what would give us 144. And the strategy is to divide when you don't have um, the other factor. You have to find the missing factor. And so we were talking about in coming years, you guys are going to know that, well, I could divide 24 by 24 and get one, and I could divide 144 by 24, and that's where we're going in the future, is to like cancel out what's on this side. So divide 144 by 24, and we can do that over here where we have a little bit extra space. In my little book that's all popped up here. 
Okay, so take your 24 into your 144. It does not, 24 does not fit into 14, so you have to uh, put one number up here in the quotient. And if I had 25 and I was trying to go for about 150, I would guess about 6. 6 times 4 is 24. Carry the 2. 6 times 2 is 12. Plus 2 is 14. And so we have 6 as the height of prism A. 6 what? Okay, because 24 times 6 would give you this, but we're all dealing in feet. 6 feet equals height. Okay, so that's your part B. Now, part C. If prism, just, just when you think it can't get any more complicated, I love this. If prism B's base is two-thirds the area of prism A's base, okay, we do know that the base area of prism A is 24. So we have a number for this. The area of prism A's base is 24. And we just need two-thirds of that, okay? Remember if they put two-thirds the area, that's like putting the fraction right next to the parenthesis, and when you have the number right next to the parenthesis, you multiply. So this is really, I know it seems complicated, but it's just two-thirds of 24 in order to find the base area uh, so that we can proceed. So prism B's base area is 2 thirds of 24, which can be easily solved if you know how to cross cancel. If you don't, you would get 48 and divide by three, but it's easier. I know that three goes into uh, 24 eight times. And so now when I multiply, I get 16 over one, which is 16. So the prism B's base area, and again, if it's area, it's going to be feet squared, just so you know. That's prism B's base area, prism B. What is the height of prism B? Well, if this is the base area, we have to go to the volume, because volume equals length times width times height. We know the volume of prism B, it's 288. We know the length times width because that's the base area. We only don't know the height, okay? Last part. Now, just like this one up here, if you have a missing factor, 16 times what is 288? Same uh, approach that we did here, well, I could just divide both sides by 16 to find out the missing number. And so we can do that over here and start dividing. And so I can fit one 16 in. I couldn't get two because two 16s would be 32. So we're going to have a large remainder, but that's okay. It's still less than 16. Next step after you compare is to bring down, and I have 128 divided by 16. Now here's where it dividing can be challenging for fifth graders because you say, well, I don't really know how to count that high. And first of all, I would say if you have to count high, it's probably going to be a high number. And it's kids can't necessarily count by 15s, and so they might want to count by 20s, which is going to be really big. But if you have a little bit too much or you get over the top, you can always redo. So let's say we start out with, say, an 8. 8 times 6 would be 48, and so I would have an 8 here, and then 8 times 1 would be 8 plus 4, and what do I get? Well, you know, it happens to work out if you just guess a high number, you can either go up or down from there. But 6 times 8 is 48, carry the 4, 8 times 1 is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And so that worked out real nice just to guess a high number. And so when we finally have our answer of 18, what is it? It's the height. And we're going to label it with feet, not feet squared, not feet cubed, because it's just the height. It's going one direction, which means I don't have an exponent. 18 feet equals the height. Yay, so click a subscribe. I hope this is helpful. Sometimes I'm just gonna have some quick videos and I, I hope that they are of assistance to you, especially on these hard problems. Good luck and we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.